Alright, welcome everybody to IS50A. Today we are going to do projectile weapons. So last time we added a hit scan weapon in. A hit scan weapon is a weapon that when you shoot, the there is no bullet that travels through the world. It just draws a line and instantly hits. Okay. So for example, as I click here, you can see the lines are coming out of me. And you can shoot that guy. There is no travel time. There is no um, ability for the person to dodge. Hit scan weapons are very common for guns in most games. Uh, very few games add like what you would call like realistic bullet drop and bullet physics and things like that. Windage and the effects of the Coriolis force and you know the curvature of the earth. No, like most most games, you click and it draws a little, it does a little ray cast and whatever hits takes damage. That's your basic hit scan weapon. Today we're going to do a projectile weapon. So we're going to make a realistic weapon. Um. I'm kind of thinking about doing a grenade because we also haven't done radial damage yet and that's pretty important. So I'm thinking that we're going to have like a little hand grenade that we can throw and uh, maybe damage the uh, the monster over here. Oh, also I can add some more monsters to the world. That might make it a little more fun too. If I can find them, monster BP. Look, I don't just need to have one. I can have multiple of them. So I can just drag these guys around, put them on the roof up here. And uh, now I've got a game that's got four monsters in it. Yeah. And we can add monster spawners too if we have time. So what I'd like to do is the ability to I kill that guy. And then these guys are like kind of running around. Take that guy out. He's off in the weeds somewhere. I don't know. I'm going to kill that guy. He's like untouchable, I think. So what I would like to do is add a grenade. It's like maybe I can throw a grenade up, hit the uh, hit the guy up on the roof up here. Maybe that's going to be too high. Uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll put him... If you hold down shift when you drag, the camera will follow it. Maybe we'll put them there and maybe I'll toss a little grenade up. Okay, so the, the key thing for doing a, uh, a grenade is first thing, well, I mean, first we need to do a key bind, right? And so we'll come over to the uh, third person, input directory, go into actions here. I've got a fire command. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do a grenade. For example, in Team Fortress, uh, when you hold down attack, it primes the grenade, but it doesn't release it until you let go. And uh, that might be that might be kind of fun to do here as well. And if you hold on to it for too long, you cook the grenade and then it goes off in your hand. So I'm going to duplicate fire, control V, control, uh, control C, control V, I A, I A grenade, grenade, it's a grenade, grenade. Actually, don't make this many typing mistakes in real life. It's when I'm typing at a weird angle like this. Uh, and then we're going to go up to the IMC default, and we are going to minimize this, and it's probably going to create a new one. It's probably going to un-minimize it. I don't know why it does this. Every time I add a new action, it unminimizes the one above the one that I just added. I don't, I don't, like, I don't, I don't get it. All right, so we're going to select, and it does it again. It just keeps unminimizing the the one above it. It's a weird, weird bug. So I'm going to select IA grenade here, and I'm going to click on this and right click, and boom, that's the easiest way of binding uh, anything in the game is just to click on the little thing and hit P or whatever, and uh, and you can bind anything that way. Triggers, modifiers, uh, yeah, all that's fine. Description uh, is not part of not part of that, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's all fine. Okay, cool. Save. And then we're going to come into the third person, BP third person character blueprint. And uh, we have left mouse click attack. Now we are going to add right click uh, grenade throw. Okay. So uh, the new uh, 5.0, 5.1, I think was when they added the new system. The new 5.1 input action system has more than just click and release. So it's got all these things here for click, started, triggering, da, 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 all these things here. Um, not all of which makes sense to me quite yet, but um, uh, one of the things they have done is while you're holding it down, it will keep activating. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use this to um, make a, a, a cooked grenade. So you can pull the pin on the grenade, and then you have three seconds to throw it. Um, and if you don't, then it'll blow up on you and kill you or whatever. So I'm going to come down here and we're going to do IA a grenade. 
like this, and uh, triggered, started, ongoing. So I'm just just to humor myself, print string. Uh, I'm gonna say T for triggered, and I'm gonna say S for started. I'm just kind of curious what this will do here. Yeah, so you get one S and then all the rest. So the T's keep activating every frame. Now if I do that and then I do ongoing like this, and I'm gonna put an O here. And uh, this is a great way of telling how these things activate, right? And here, S. So every time I click S, I get an S, but there is no O, so I'm not getting anything for the ongoing. So, canceled, completed. Okay, so what we need then is the triggered, I guess. Okay, so we're gonna have the started as like, we're gonna have it say, you pull the pin on the grenade. And then for the triggered, we're gonna have this, uh, just checking to see if it doesn't like go off in your hand. And then, oh yeah, we'll, let's have one for, let's have one also for, um, just have it say ongoing because it makes more sense to me than triggered. And then when we release, that's when we're gonna throw the grenade. And so we're gonna have completed maybe? Let's try completed or canceled. I don't know which one, let's switch. Let's try canceled here or cancel culture. And then uh, let's do one more. Completed. That. That. Thank you. So we got ongoing going on, and I let go, and it does completed. So there is no canceled. Okay. So canceled is pointless. Ongoing is pointless, at least for our needs here. And so, cool. So this code down here is going to be, you throw the grenade, right? And then this here is going to be checking to see if the thing goes off in our hands. Um, we could do this with the timer. We'll just do it here. So when we uh, when we pull the pin, we're going to be we're going to give the player three seconds. We, we can make that configurable. We can make it uh, a variable over here, and we can call this grenade cook time. You want your grenades to be nice and toasty by the time they complete. Float, compile, save. After you compile and save it, you'll see the variable appears up here and we can set it to three. Okay, a lot of students forget that step because the initial value does not appear when you first make the variable. You have to save it and compile it. Then remember to go over here. If you set it to zero, it's gonna instantly explode in your, in your hands. You're gonna be set. So what we're going to do is we are going to save a variable uh, that contains the current time plus three plus grenade cook time. So we're going to get grenade cook time. You cook it to perfection. That is exactly right. So we are going to get the time. And this is one of those things in uh, Unreal that has like 900 million options. <clears throat> get time, get date, get day, get day of year. Get time of day, get year, get capture last time, get accumulated time, get actor time, get delta time, get time in seconds. Thank you. <laughs> there, is, there are a lot of ways of getting time in Unreal Engine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the time uh, that the world's been up, and we're gonna add to it uh, three. These guys are not lined up, so we're gonna line them to the right edge. Thank you very much. And we're just going to add these values together. So if the current time is 10 seconds since the game began, uh, when we pull the pin, that means the grenade's going to go off at 13 because grenade cook time is three. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this and choose promote to variable. And we're going to save a variable. And this variable is going to be called not new var. It is going to be called grenade explode time. And so what is going to happen is if we pull the pin at eight, grenade explode times going to be set to eleven. Now, every time this ongoing thing here happens, 
what we are going to do is check to see, get the time in seconds, which won't appear, by the way, because it doesn't have a white pin on it. So you have to unselect and say get time in seconds. <clears throat> and we're going to branch. And so that we can hook up now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to see if the grenade should explode. So if the current time in seconds is greater than or equal to, equal to doesn't really matter very much, grenade explode time, then we blow up. Okay. So the current time is 10 seconds, 10.1, 10.2, 10.3. If it ever exceeds grenade explode time, which is 13, uh, then we go boom. Okay. This is checking to see if it's going to go off in our hand. So if true, then right now we're just going to print a string saying it explodes in your hand. <clears throat> and then, uh, then, hmm, we need to cancel this probably, actually. Hmm, okay. All right, let's just come in here. Because we can't throw it after we've had it blow up in our hands. So pull the pin. And it explodes your hand over and over again. Okay. So. <laughs> you instantly die as it explodes. And we can also do a damage actor. Damage. Point damage. Radial damage. <clears throat> Apply radial damage. We're going to do 50 radial damage. The origin is, it's going to go off in our hands. So it's going to hurt people around us, right? So it's not just going to hurt me. It's going to detonate, right? So we're going to do, let's have it do 500 damage. Why not? And uh, we're going to get our actual location. <clears throat> and so we're going to get our location. It's going to blow up in our location. And the radius will be five meters. Why not? Uh, damage type, whatever, ignore, nah, nah, all good, all good, all right, so, here we go, so let's see if we can use it to take out some bad guys with us, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, boom, yep, and then we're dead, <laughs> we took it, we took two bad guys out with us, so it was a Qualified success. Oh, it's telling me. All right, I'm holding down the pin and boom. And then we're dead again. Okay. And we're now in an infinite death spiral. What do you guys think? Any questions about this so far? Let's pause the recording. Well, it looks like they have uh, built into the uh, input action system a hold and release uh, option, but I'm just going to code it directly in Blueprints here. So if we blow up, then what we're going to do is uh, we need to track to see if the grenade's done, basically. So when we prime the grenade, when we pull the pin on the grenade, uh, what we can do is just save a, a boolean. We can say uh, we can say like a uh, grenade primed, and that since that is either true or false, we're going to set that as a boolean. Compile it, save it. By default, we do not have a grenade primed in our hand. And basically all these actions here should only happen, uh, at least the, f the, like, at least the first one. You can't pull the pen if you've already pulled the pen. So but you can't start it until you've released. It's not maybe an issue anyway. So let's uh, do grenade primed here and set it to be true. Q to line them up. Grenade primed is true. And then as we hold it down, here, we only do this if uh, if grenade primed is still true. So if grenade primed is still true, then we will do what we were doing before. Basically, what, what we're going to have happen is if it blows up in our hand, then we're going to set this to false, and it's going to stop blowing up in our hand. Because right now, as long as we hold it down, it's going to be doing 500 damage every frame, you know, forever. Till we till the game resets. So uh, what we want to do is basically say it explodes your hand. We can probably do it. We can probably do this another way with a once node. A once node allows you to do once, allows you to only have it run one time. But uh, this way will work too. So 
we're going to set a grenade primed to false. So after it blows up, we no longer have a live grenade in our hand. And then that'll stop us here by checking every frame. We're checking to see, do I have a primed grenade in my hand? If it's false, it just doesn't do anything. And so eventually the user will just let go of the, the mouse button and then they can pull in the pin on another one. They can't do this another time until they let off on the first one, I think. And then as it completes, to throw the grenade, we have to make sure that there is a grenade primed as well. So we're going to duplicate this. Uh, you can't throw a grenade if it's already blown up in your hand. So we are going to uh, double check that the uh, grenade is in fact still there to throw it. And that should be good to go. So let's come over here. I will uh, first hold on to the grenade, blow myself up. One, one thousand. Oh, it said boom already. Interesting. Uh, one, two, three. If I let go, you throw the grenade, pull the pin, and you dead. It explodes in your hand. Okay, so and then it resets the world. Okay, so that's all working. That's all correct. So if I do this a bunch of times, you throw the grenade, pull the pin, throw the grenade, pull the pin. Now currently, we're not actually throwing any grenades. We're just printing this. This is an important concept for you guys to get, which is you you want. As you're doing development, you need to be like making sure the logic is all working right. Uh, maybe we should add a ammo count uh, to grenades. You can only throw three grenades until you get an ammo pickup or something. So if I click on the inventory here, um, maybe I'll add like a grenades you know option here. Uh, you can watch the video for IS50B on how to uh, do an inventory system if you want, uh, or you can just make a variable here called grenades. And, and so what we can do is add a branch here. So we can drag out from here, get inventory, drag out from there under uh, map. And we will do value, uh, value, value, value. get uh, map. So we're going to get grenades. Is that what I called it? Grenades, yeah. So this is how many grenades I have, and if this value is uh, hold on, branch, if this value is greater than zero, then we can throw a grenade. So I am going to grab the number of grenades that I have. You just make a normal variable called grenades. I'm doing it a slightly fancier IS50B way. And uh, I'm going to get the number of grenades. And if I have a grenade, then it will move on. Also, I could set the value of this to decrement uh, the number of grenades that I have as well. So I could uh, drag off from here and map set these like the values. Uh, all keys present map does not have keys. Finds value. Adds a key. It's going to be over in the blue light. Right. So grenades, grenades, grenades. Make sure you spell right. It's going to be set to the current grenades value. That value is greater than zero then we will take the current value, subtract one off of it. And set that value. So what we're doing is we're getting, uh, we're getting the value of grenades. And again, if you don't have a map set up like I do, uh, just make a variable called grenades, get the value, see if it's over zero. If it is, we allow you to pull the pin and you were just going to subtract one off the value of grenades and set that and then move on with your life. So now we can only throw grenades three times until we get like an ammo pickup or something like that. Throw the grenade, there's one. Pull the pin, release. Pull the pin, release. Oh, it's doing the throw of the grenade. <laughs> it's doing the throwing of the grenade. But it didn't, uh... <laughs> right? So it's triggering the uh, it's triggering the throw. Uh, that's interesting. So the grenade. Why did he do that? Because 
Oh, because when, when we throw the grenade, we're not setting it to false. That's why. Okay, so when you throw the grenade, we need to set grenade primed to false. <laughs> yes. This is why it's very important to test all of your logic. And, and click really fast, uh, click slowly, and see if, uh, see if everything is working correctly. Okay, so now we got everything except for the, 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 the thing that we all came here to see, which is to how do I create an object in the world and have it fly through the world and, and do stuff, okay? So I'm gonna pause my work on BB third person character for a second, and I'm gonna make a, going up to the build directory, I'm gonna make a new object, a new blueprint that is an actor. And this thing is gonna be called a BP grenade. And so we're gonna be throwing a, uh, I normally do that as a grenade BP, how about that? I actually like having my names have the BP at the end. That way it doesn't weirdly alphabetize things. Um, a lot of people you'll see it be BP grenade, BP door, things like that. That's kind of the standard in, in uh, Unreal Engine. But then all of your stuff are named BP and they're all like kind of next to each other. Uh, it's just a style thing, I guess. Um, but grenade BP, double click on it. And we're gonna add a sphere to our grenade. Our grenade is just gonna be a sphere. Uh, and this is going to be called like the grenade. I don't know. And what material should it have? It should have bill mat. Why not? That's a cool looking material. That's our grenade right there. Uh, it's movable. Good. The grenade itself. <sighs> da, 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 da. Level streaming. Can't be damaged. Initial lifespan. Probably we should put an initial. I should probably, yeah, maybe not. Yeah, but uh, okay, it's all fine. Uh, it's click enabled is fine. Scaling, all that's fine. Okay, the grenade itself is a sphere. And tooltip a throwable grenade. It's movable, that's important, it's movable. Static mesh is a sphere. I could get like a grenade mesh if I cared. Uh, simulate physics, we want that to be on because we want this thing to just follow physics. Uh, enable gravity, yes. A rocket launcher would not have gravity on it. Grenades have gravity on them. Ignore radial impulse, ignore radial false. You yeah, probably, yeah, I should probably ignore those. We don't want the grenade getting knocked around. Apply impulse on damage. I guess. Constraints, it's fine. Inertia, conditioning, whatever the hell that is. Start awake, yeah, we definitely want that. That should be a physics volume, generate wake events. Uh, okay, solution. Simulation generates hit events, probably, maybe, I don't know. Generate overlaps, sure. Uh, collision presets. Maybe block all, I don't know. Um, Mm, I'll just leave it at that. Can the character step on it? No. Um, yeah, basically all the defaults should be fine on this. The main thing you want to do is come down to physics and make sure you simulate physics. Uh, if not, you're going to create it and the ball is going to hover there in midair and not do anything and, and not look very realistic. So by simulating physics, uh, we can also change the mass of it. Like 200 pounds is like a lot of mass for this thing here. It might be too big, actually. Let's uh, let's see how big this is. It's probably a unit. <laughs> it's a meter. That is a grenade right there. That is a heck of a chunky grenade. So we're gonna make this guy not that big. We're gonna make him a tenth of the size, like that. And now, uh, he's a little too small. Let's do point two. Uh, so that is. The thing. Yeah. Okay, it seems about right, right around the right side. Okay, so default scene roots should be hidden in the game. Right? Maybe I might hide the the actual grenade. 
No, it's there. Okay. So you kick it, right? So, okay. So we got a grenade that'll roll around and follow the rules of physics and things like that. Uh, the only thing I would want to care about is its mass, because 200 pounds is a lot of mass. So a grenade's probably two kilos, maybe. Um, how many kilograms is a grenade? Uh, half a kilo. Good job, Quora. Never change. Interesting story, not really relevant, but I'd say it's a kilo or, or 400 grams. Sure. All right. Let's see how that works. Okay, so we've got our grenade here, and the grenade itself is going to say when it touches something, it's going to it's going to go boom. Okay. So we can overlap, tick, begin play. Uh. Mm, Hmm. Maybe on begin play, we want to remember what time we were created and blow up. Or actually, let's just make a variable. Let's do this. Let's say uh, time to die. And so when we hit this time, we're going to make it world writable so that the person throwing us can set it. So uh, basically, uh, on event tick, which is really bad, probably want to use a timer again to do this. Oh, um, but whatever. Um, we can uh, get a uh, branch here and drag out the time to die. Get time to die. Um, and so get time of day. seconds. Okay, so if the current time in seconds is greater than, how do we want to do this? So if this isn't set, then the thing's just going to immediately blow up. Oh. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so if the current time in seconds is greater than or equal to the time to die, so if the time to die is 20 seconds and the current time is 19, it does not blow up, but if it exceeds 20 seconds, then we go boom. So we're going to uh, spawn emitter allocation. Later on, I'll show you guys how to uh, do this. Uh, get uh, well, location. Grenade. Later on, I'll show you guys how to do Niagara effects, which are a lot of fun. And we're going to spawn an explosion. And we can play a sound. Do an explosion sound, and then we will delete. And we'll do radial damage. Apply radial damage with fall off. Mm -hmm. Now we'll just do radial damage. Radial damage with fall off means um, the further you are away from the grenade, the less damage it does. But we'll just uh, have this do like, yeah, maybe, maybe we should. I don't know. We'll have it do like 50 damage. The origin is again our origin. And the damage radius will be two meters. And then we'll destroy ourselves. Okay, so now we've got a grenade. The time to die, I'll just set this to like, I don't know, five seconds or something. That's because we got one in the world, and so that'll give us a little preview of the thing, depending on what 
the time it is. So there's a thing, and so five seconds in, it should detonate. Good. All right, cool. So uh, good, all that's working. Um, so when time in the world exceeds time to die, the thing will detonate. Again, using event tick for this is not uh, ideal. You should be using a timer, but whatever. Um, yes, yeah, so the grenade's good. Uh, maybe if the grenade touches something, we could have it detonate as well. But in general, grenades don't explode like if you bounce them off somebody's face, you know. Normally they just go off on a timer. I mean, we could if we wanted make it like explode if you make direct contact with somebody, but this is, this is pretty good, I think. So... And select all this, comment, uh, grenade detonates in X seconds, basically. And that color should be a orangish red color. That's the only color possible here. Okay, so do you guys understand what's happening here? Basically every tick, not good. Uh, every tick it is going to be saying, hey, is it time for me to blow up? Is it time for me to blow up? Is it time for me to blow up? And uh, we check to see if the variable here called time to die, if the game time, which is the second since the game began, if that game time exceeds the time to die, then it will uh, spawn an emitter, play a sound, damage everybody in a radius, and then detonate. And so what we're going to do from the player is after we create the grenade, then we're going to set time to die based on how long we've cooked the grenade for. So if we cooked the grenade for two seconds and threw it, the time to die is only going to be one second from the current time because we're going to be doing a cool grenade effect like this. Okay. So, um, so if it blows up in her face, let, yeah, let's have it just do 50 damage. Um, yeah, two meter radius, let's say. Uh, yeah, nah, five, five meters feels pretty good. Five meters. Feels good. We'll have this guy be five meters also. And we should probably add in fall off so it does less damage the further you are away, but um, this is a good good starting place. So grenade, I think we're good with grenade. Just close out of that. Okay, so now all we need to do is actually create the projectile. So I think we've got everything done. The only last thing we need to do is, uh, uh, we can kind of take out these print strings too, I guess. Um, Whatever. Uh, the last thing we need to do is actually create the projectile. This is this is the moment you've all been waiting for. How do we create an actor in a blueprint? And the answer is you use create actor. Spawn actor from class will spawn an actor. Okay. And this is how you make a new. This is how you make a new actor in blueprints in Unreal. Okay. So uh, you create actor, and then you have to tell it which blueprint class you want to create. And so here we are going to pick grenade BP and uh, the uh, owner could be us. That's how you can get credit for kills and things like that. Or you can have the grenade not damage you if you wanted, but I don't care about any of that. The main thing I care about though is the spawn transform here. So spawn transform means if I split this, the location, the rotation and the scale of the grenade. So the rotation, I don't care about. It's a sphere. The scale, I've already scaled it the way that I like. I don't need to change that. Uh, but the location is the place where I want it to come out. And so I think we've already added a gun shoot point on our uh, mannequin here. So that seems like a good enough place for a grenade to come from. Uh, if you want, we could probably make another point. Um, so if I parent it to the capsule component and add a scene component, which was just there a second ago, scene component. I can call this a grenade throw point. And if I drag a grenade throw point up, I can maybe have it come up a little bit higher than gun shoot point. You know, gun shoot point, I'm shooting things out of my Iron Man style glowy thing here. Grenade Grenade throw point is going to be like up a little bit higher, maybe a little bit further ahead, so I don't bounce into it or something like that. Uh, it's always awkward when you run into your own grenades, you know. Uh, so I'm going to have it just maybe come up, up a little bit, forward a little bit, have the grenades kind of appear up here. 
and uh, red is the forward vector, so that's all good. So I'm going to come back into the event graph. So the transform point is going to be grenade throw point, and I'm going to feed that uh, to get location. So I'm going to get, get the location of it, and then the rotation might matter. Does it matter? Uh, if it does, you can get the, the rotation of it as well. It's not going to matter for this. Uh, what I do care about though is the um, the physics on it. So like, let's let's test this code for now. Just make sure this works, because this is kind of like the key point for today. Is like I can right click and I can spawn a grenade. Aha! It blew up on top of me. It blew up on top of me, right? Oh, now I'm out of grenades. <laughs> Let me increase my inventory of grenades from three to thirty, so I can actually test this. This is this is why I was moving the grenade throw point away from me, right? Because it's uh. It's landing on top and blowing up. All right, let's try that. There we go. Oh, and it's instantly detonating because I'm not setting. I'm. It's not blowing up on me. It's actually blowing up because the grenade uh, class does not have. Uh, I, I'm. I'm not setting the uh, time to die on it. So here I am spawning the actor, and then on the actor I can set time to die. And so the time to die is going to be um, my grenade explode time. So that's that's why I was uh, doing that earlier. Uh, the grenade's going to go off at the same time. When I pull the pin, it'll, gr it'll go off either in my hand or after I throw it. It doesn't matter. That's why I calculated up here. The time the grenade's going to go off once you pull the pin out. So, um, so after I spawn the actor here, I'm going to set its explode time to be uh, whatever it's supposed to be. That's why I created that variable here. So do that, and then the the last thing I'm going to need to do is give it a velocity, right? Because right now the thing's just dropping, right? So I'm cooking the grenade, I let go. Okay, all right, dude. I took the grenade, one, one thousand, two, one thousand. I drop it, and it goes off almost immediately. But if I, oh, I killed myself. <laughs> uh, too realistic a grenade simulation. All right, let me just kill these guys so they stop harassing me. Right. So if I cook the grenade, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, drop it. Okay. If I click and run away. 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, right? Click it for a second and run away. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, good. So the only thing I need to do now is... I'm out of grenades. Uh, the only thing I need to do now is give it a... Uh, Give it a uh, velocity, right? So uh, the way we can do that is we can drag off the uh, the new guy here. We can say add velocity and location. Velocity change to impulse at location. Add impulse to a single rigid body at a specific location. Screen thing. Uh, let's see here. Impulse. Add impulse, add impulse at location, add radial impulse, add velocity change, change in angular velocity, add angular impulse. Uh, good for a one time instant burst. Let's see if there is another way of doing this. Set velocity, maybe. Set physics linear velocity, set physics angular velocity, set all physics linear velocity. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's do linear velocity. So the grenade is going to move, and so what we're going to do is after we uh, create the grenade, we have to give it a little, uh, that needs to be set. Yeah. And uh, was that just attached a second ago? Yeah. Um, and so we now we need to give it a velocity, okay? And so the velocity that we should give a grenade is based on the direction I'm looking. 
right? So if I'm looking this way, the grenade should come out this way. If I'm looking this way, the grenade should come out this way with a little bit of an up also, right? When we throw a grenade, uh, you, I guess you could fastball pitch it, you know, in uh, in Borderlands 3, there's actually a grenade called the fastball and you just, just fling, a, fling it at him. Usually though, when I'm thinking of a video game, I kind of go up a little bit. So if I get the forward vector on this mesh, again, the forward vector is not set properly on the mesh. The forward vector is actually to the left because uh, they're using probably Blender or something like that to make this. It didn't fix it for the tutorial. I don't know. Um, so what I can do though is just grab the grenade throw point. The forward vector on this guy is set properly. And uh, the uh, if I drag that out here, get the grenade throw point. I can just get the forward vector on it by saying get forward, like that. So that'll tell me the direction that the grenade should throw. In fact, if I really wanted to be fancy, really wanted to be fancy, I don't even need to use the up vector. Watch this. Um, I'm going to go to the grenade throw point and I'm going to actually rotate it backwards. 50 degrees. So it's going to come out at a 50 degree angle. And then the forward vector is just up and up and at him. So, uh, ah, let's, let me pull this in a little bit because it's actually going to be flying away from me now. So I'll just have it kind of coming up out of my forehead. Maybe, maybe that's tilted a little bit too much. Let me tilt it down 10 degrees. That looks about right. So then I don't, See, normally I would get the forward vector and I'd like add in the up vector. So if I get the up vector and I get the forward vector, I could like add them together. But uh, no, I'll just I'll just be fancy. I'm just gonna get I'm just gonna rotate the forward vector. And so the forward vector is again a unit vector, so it's gonna come out with a uh, a, a velocity of one, which is very very small. So um, we need to multiply this by the speed. And not a vector. Right click, choose float. And we're going to give it a speed of. Uh, let's try a thousand and see what that feels like. We might want to make this a variable too. All right, so that should do it. Yeah. Put yeah. the grenade. Throw it. Man, these guys are all over me. They're all over me. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. Let go! Might be one, one thousand, two, one. I killed myself. Dang. Or they got me. Okay. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. So it's detonating in like midair. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. All right, I think I got him with that one. There we go. I think the art might be a little bit too strong. I died. <laughs> I took myself out with that grenade. Uh, <laughs> I feel like it's good for like getting grenades up that way. Especially effective weapon. Walker huh? mine. One. <laughs> so how should we fix this? We got three minutes left. How should we fix this? We could. Right now, it's not using the camera at all, right? So if I rotate the camera like down behind the player, it's not going to arc it because we're in th we're we're in third person mode. Usually in a first person shooter, 
use the direction of the camera and you get the forward vector of the camera to determine the direction of the of the grenade. How would you guys fix this right now? Because right now I'm basically tossing grenades over the bad guys. You know, it's not really it's not really working too well. The grenades roll, you know, so if I were to toss it up on the platform where the guy was, the grenade would just roll off unless I cooked it just right. Make it a little bit slower and lower the arc. Okay. So I can uh, make it a 500 velocity, let's say, and I can just come in here and rotate the throw point down a little bit. There's a little bit of a flatter arc at a lower speed. All right, let's try that. Game design's an iterative process, you know? Or I could try having the camera angle, like, factored in, right? <laughs> that feels actually really funny. <laughs> You're just kind of like, eh. <laughs> Present. It's yours. Tag. Dang it. <laughs> Alright, so on my own, it's gonna look like that. Hey, jackpot. Alright. Killing me, Smalls. One one thousand, two one thousand. <laughs> it's like just like a little layup, you know. Like, and I think I got him with that one. <laughs> Did I get him? No. <laughs> it really feel, feels more like I'm laying laying mines, you know. Like, hey, come get, me. get him, get him. Ah. Kicking the grenade, kicking the grenade. This is not a terribly effective weapon. I feel like I should have killed him by now. Oh, I'm out of grenades. <laughs> well, hmm. What do you guys think? What do you think? It's currently not using my my velocity, right? The player of the player's velocity does not matter, right? It is always going to come out at five meters per second. So the velocity should be plus the walking speed. Okay. Now, I should warn you about that. You, you think, okay, let's make physics work properly. In my game, uh, players would sprint backwards at full speed and shoot a rocket, and the rocket would hover in midair. <laughs> With flames coming out and everything, the rocket's just sitting there like this. Just in midair, not moving. And so they would go over the bridge, running backwards, shooting, and they would have all of these rockets just hovering in midair, not moving, and then the other team's like... How am I supposed to get through here? Because there's just these rockets burning away, like just hovering in midair. So yeah, physics is actually not... Uh, realistic physics is often not fun. But maybe, maybe, maybe we need it here. Maybe, maybe we need it for this grenade. Because the grenade is coming out kind of weak. Um, so let's add this to... Let's add that velocity to our velocity. So uh, do we, can we get our velocity? Hmm, I don't know. We are not a physics actor, so we don't actually maybe have velocity. Let's see if we can get it, though. All right. Get velocity. Get component velocity. Cool. All right. Let's try that. Yeah, the physics engine is also really weird in, in Unreal Engine. Um, a lot of the units are like really screwy. Like how much impulse you need to uh, move something is like the numbers are like five hundred thousand. Yeah, seem to be maybe. seem to be making any difference. Hmm. OK. 
Character movement. Yeah. Velocity, maybe. Like I said, uh, all these kinds of things are like really wonky because, like, if you're not simulating physics, then you don't have like a you know physics linear velocity, right? And so you have to kind of hack some of these things together. Um, you can't set the like the controller on the player like override. Like you try doing things like setting the velocity of the player. Yeah, hey, there we go. I get to sprint. There we go. Check that out. All right, fastball. the ramp and we'll just shoot him to death. Okay, sprint. Took the grenade. Whoa, he just kicked it way the hell out. <laughs> he was having none of that. Kick the ball too. Ow. Just blew myself up. I feel like the grenade radius is like not really that big either. Like, I feel like I'm I'm landing shots that are just not uh, not doing anything. You know what I mean? Let's pull up the grenade again. <sighs> Radial damage. It's a five meter radius. Change it to like a ten meter radius, and we'll do like a full hundred damage. So if we if we hit anything, oh, not ten, not ten, ten meters. Thank you. If we hit anything with it, it should instantly die. Nothing has more than a health damage. Did he not take damage from it? Oh, there we go. All right. These guys have more than 100 health? I guess so. Uh, Off the Japanese lantern. Oh, he just headbutted it away. I died. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's it's. Oh, stay away from that grenade. <laughs> it spawns a grenade right on top of you. Uh, monster's death is delayed. Uh, maybe. Or maybe it just takes two grenades to kill it. Yeah, he also kicks the grenade away. Got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. myself up again. Dang it, dude. It's a hard game. <laughs> and I took myself out with it, too, of course. Yeah, well, um, maybe I should delete this one here too, uh, so you don't immediately die when the game starts. 
So that is that's how you make a projectile. Okay. So the uh, the the summary of it is this: spawn actor will make an actor. And so this is the long and the short of it. If you want to make a rocket launcher, any kind of projectile weapon, you spawn an actor, and you have to make a blueprint for the projectile that you're going to have in the world. In this case, I made a grenade BP that has a little variable on it that determines when it is time to die. And so I spawn it. I set its time to die to be the current time plus three or, you know, shorter if I've cooked the grenade in my hand. And then you can do things like set a velocity on it, which will allow it to fly through the world. Uh, on the object itself, you want to do things like uh, make sure that physics is enabled if you want it to be simulating physics. And if you want it to uh, have gravity, make sure gravity's on. Rocket launchers, you would untick that, and then they would be unaffected by gravity. It's very common in a video game for a rocket to just travel in a straight line. And then you can do things like this, where in uh, three seconds it blows up. What I want from you guys is to make a rocket launcher. I want you to make an object that flies through the world, and when it contacts an item, it detonates. What event do you guys need to do to make it detonate on a hit? Which, which event is it? That will, uh, that will, you'll do the spawn emitter, play sound, explosion radius, distractor. But instead of event tick, what is the event called when you hit something in the world? Connor? Or no? Indeed. Event hit. So. Once you make a rocket launcher, you click, you shoot, rocket appears, flies through the world. When it contacts anything, a wall, a monster, anything, it detonates and does damage. Probably a lot easier to actually kill these monsters than this uh, little weak uh, grenade thing that we got going on here. I feel like it, it just feels like a very anemic like little grenade. I'm going to up it a little bit more, give it a little more kick. And uh, that's it for today. So if you uh, have any questions, please post on to the uh, Discord for the class. And uh, I'm just going to go and try and kill monsters for grenades with grenades for a while. Let's see if I can land some basketball shots on these guys. It's one of the most fun things about doing game dev is... Hey, got him. There we go. There we go. Everything's right in the world now. So playtesting the... A lot of fun. I have, this is actually surprisingly hard. Cook the grenade. You know what? We're going out together. There we go. And I'm dead. That's class for today, guys. Thanks for coming out. Hope you learned something useful. Peace.